Welcome to the Balanced Ambition Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Southam. Here, we delve into candid conversations with entrepreneurs, exploring both their business journey and their secrets to maintaining mental well-being. As we navigate the balance of ambition and inner peace, I hope you find insights, inspiration and invaluable takeaways in every episode. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Jessica. Welcome to the show. Now, before we dive into the fact that you're, you know, a multi award winning serial entrepreneur with a number of businesses, give me some context about you. Tell me a bit about your background. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I suppose growing up, I grew up in an area that was, um, it was actually recently described as one of Britain's biggest hell holes, um, which is a, a group of high rises um, in the middle of Birmingham with my mum. And in this area, you can imagine like it was full of drugs and crime and domestic violence and anything that you can imagine, you name it. And me and my mum would often spend the weekends um, go into women's refuge and women's hostels um, and escape in domestic violence. So, and my other family members around me would always kind of have this, put this limiting belief on me that that was going to be my destiny. Like you're going to go and be exactly the same and this is your environment and this this is how it's going to be for you, right? And And I always used to remember like my first belief was that this this is absolutely not it for me like this getting away from this environment is like my top priority right and often for entrepreneurs i think you're driven to prove people wrong like i think a lot of entrepreneurs are driven to prove something and that was mine like my my biggest drive was to be financially free financially independent so that I didn't have to be around domestic violence, be mentally, physically, financially abused in any way, shape or form, right? So that was my first goal, if you like, was I'm going to want, number one, I'm going to be financially free to make my own decisions, be financially independent. And number two was I'm going to prove you wrong. (laughs) So they were my (laughs) first two priorities. So so I am. Um, I actually started a car washing business at ten, and I felt that 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 wasn't sustainable long term. Um, at twelve, I started working in um, salons, and I'd work after school. I'd work weekends. Um, and by the age of eighteen, I was managing a salon. Um, you know, I was winning trips to Vegas. I was earning good money. Like, I just literally was head down, and I'm going to do everything that I can to always progress to the next level like around me I'd be like what's that person doing I'm gonna do that what's that person doing I'm gonna do that and it was always about moving to the next to the next level um and so I taught hair and beauty for big brands I taught for private training providers um uh, I was an internal verifier and then when I went on maternity leave with my daughter nine years ago nearly ten years ago um, I knew a lot of salon owners and I knew um, a lot of business owners and they were like, I know you're on maternity leave, but could you come and help me? Could we have a coffee? Um, and I did a consulting degree whilst I was on maternity leave with my daughter. And and so my consulting business and coaching business just started very organically, like with people just asking me to help them and, and support them. And so it kind of grew from there. And then, um, and I was doing like face-to-face business coaching and business consulting um, with women in business, mostly salon owners, because that was was my background. Um, But then in 2016, I had my son um, in the March and he was literally a couple of weeks old. Um, And my husband plays sport. So he plays rugby. Um, He was playing for Leicester Tigers at the time. And we'd always lived in Leicester. And he literally came home and was like, we're moving to Bristol. And I was like, okay, like, when are we moving to Bristol? Like, I'd never been to Bristol. And he was like, yeah, like now, like we're going. Like we need to put the house on the market and we're going. So overnight, because I had a face-to-face business, I like lost my business overnight. And I was like, yeah, what am I going to do? Like all my clients are here. 
Um, so I moved and, but yet they were still reaching out to me and they're like, I know you've moved, but can you still help me? <laughs> can you still support me? What about me? Um, which obviously I found brilliant. And I took my whole business online in 2016 because I had two children. I moved city and helping my clients. Like I felt like it was selfish. Like I love talking about business. Like what I do with my clients, I could do all day, every day, talking about marketing, talking about finances, talking about systems, talking about business, talking about branding and business ideas and all this stuff. Like I could just do it all, all day, every day. Um, so yeah, so that's how we kind of, where we've got to now. And then we've just grown it and grown it. And now we have clients in all different countries. Um, and yeah, I, just, I wouldn't change any of it for the world now. I mean, you've clearly got that real passion about what you what you do. And it was really interesting hearing your sort of early story. And I've heard stories you know that, that are similar from other people and I can never work out why when some people have that upbringing that is really tough it is really tough some people they use it as fuel to get out of that yeah. and others just stay where they are because they they almost accept okay this is my fate but why do you what do you think you had in you that that made you go one one way and go no I'm getting out I I think um I think it's the trauma of realising that the people that are supposed to support you and help you are not. And you are your plan A, you are your plan B, and you can only solely rely on yourself. I think later down the line, like now, it can have negative impacts, right? Like you can be a little bit cut off from people or a little bit um, like have those barriers, right? And that's something mm. that now you have to unlearn to go into that survive, like into that thrive mode instead of that yeah. survive mode, which is the thing that got you to where you are. So it is a catch 22 and you have to be aware of it. But I think absolutely. And I think that's why it's so important for you as a parent to be that role model to your child, because you're mm. creating their beliefs. You're creating what they think is possible for them and how they behave. And I think you're absolutely right. Most people, and I'd say 80%, because I've, I've looked into this quite a bit, 80% of people repeat the behavior of their environment. Um, and mm. only 20% go the opposite way. Um, and I think that for me personally, I think that when you've had that much, that much disruption and that much trauma you kind of just get to the point where you burn out of it and for me I, I think I, as a child I was burnt out of of that environment and that behavior that it made me just go do you know what any kind of I just had a zero tolerance I was like if you bring drama <laughs> or you uh, impacted me in any way negative shape or form I'm done uh, like yeah. because because I just had so much of it and even now, like I don't have those people around me that don't add anything to me. I'm like, if you're not adding no. to me, like mentally, creatively, like you're not excited. I just am burnt out of that negative energy that I just don't need anymore. Um, and I think, you know, again, that can be a positive and a negative. But I think if you're yeah. aware of it, um, but yeah, it is interesting. A lot of people do repeat the cycle. And it's hard yeah. for you to be that person to stop the cycle. Yeah, yeah, because we are that, it's often said, we're the sum of the five people we spend the most time with. And, and obviously that means for children growing up when they're developing and when they're learning and putting together their belief systems, yeah. it's very much related to the environment they're exposed to. Um, so you're completely right. As parents, actually, we have a responsibility to ensure that environment is actually a productive one for them going into adult life. Oh, absolutely. From like your relationship, like how you allow them to talk to each other, how you um, interact with them, how they see their value, how they see what's possible for them. Like I do say sometimes, like we have to like, when they come home from school and they say certain things, you have to like undo them beliefs a little bit from school. Yeah. Um, and that can be a little bit hard and a little bit challenging. But I just see my goal, 
my job as a parent is to help them fulfill everything that is possible for them in any way, shape and form. Yeah. And, and you're clearly you're, you're doing that for your children. But in your professional life, you're doing that as well. You're clearly very passionate about helping other people improve their their life. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so to, to, to talk me for a bit about that. And uh, well, yeah, just, just explain what you do. I think I think when you've always had that belief pushed on you that you're not worthy, you're not enough. When you actually go into business and you and you speak to other women, I think that a lot of them have had the same thing. And actually the more the more I help other people and I see them breaking cycles in their generations, the more I feel like it's a yeah, fuck you. Like I'm doing it for myself, <laughs> but now I'm helping other people do it. And yeah. all these people are gonna be better, stronger, and they're gonna improve their children's life and, and we're gonna have this big knock on effect. So it's definitely about creating that massive impact yeah do, do you think that's a thing i mean you you said you predominantly work with female entrepreneurs do you, do you feel there is a bit of a belief block for a lot of female entrepreneurs going into business and i know i mean i'm a big believer that things are changing but certainly probably when i was a child you know you said businessmen that that was it it was like if you're in business you were you were male yeah but that's it's changing but do you think a lot of that belief system is is hanging about yeah i think it is changing and i uh, which is great and i think it is getting there but when you do listen to the way that people talk and the way that and what people say it's still there okay so mm. i'll give you an example so i've just started a property business just um not that long ago actually we've had property over the years but now we've actually started it as a proper business <laughs> and and so we're renovating and renting properties so you know one day i'm like this and doing interviews and doing speaking and speaking on stages and teaching clients and blah blah blah. the next day i'm literally trackies hair up you know, like ripping out houses <laughs> um and dealing with tradesmen and to give you an example my husband yes he's on the business the property business but he has absolutely nothing to do with it like he didn't even come and see the properties that we bought like he has nothing to do with it right but yet all the tradesmen would say to me here's the quote when you ask your husband and it was like i needed permission to mm. Even, you know, they just wouldn't see me as a decision maker. They'd say, oh, if you give this quote to your husband and things like that. And I think, so in one way, we we think that things are changing, but in another way, they're absolutely not. No. No, I mean, I, I hear these examples all the time and it, exactly the same happened to my partner probably a month ago, uh, went to the garage and um, they sort of said, oh, you know, one of these tyres needs changing or whatever. And she was like, oh, I'm not sure. And they literally said, have a word with your husband and uh, yeah, maybe book it back in. She was like, it's my car that I paid for with my own money. I don't need to ask anyone. But there is that sort of yeah you know, speak to your husband yeah. it's it's crazy really and when you speak to women that's that is what they're dealing with all day every day in mm. different ways right um some ways more extreme than others but and we can say we're heading towards being equal but in a lot of ways we're not no no and i and clearly, you know, it's very easy to argue that actually, you know, this is something, you know, people just expect that they feel that. But we've just spoken about two examples where it's still happening on, you know, almost like a daily basis. Yeah. So you've got to be quite strong to knock that back, haven't you? And I guess, yeah. you know, you've got a, a clearly a strong belief system. You believe in yourself. You know, you can do it. And actually, you can probably stand up for yourself. But a lot of people, maybe if their yeah. confidence isn't quite there that just knocks them back yeah i think so for example so when this guy said that to me i said yeah of course i'll give your wife a call and ask her if what she thinks to your plastering and then i'll maybe move forwards with having you to do it um and clearly you just stood there shocked but i was like it's the same thing i don't need to ask your wife yeah. just like you don't need to ask my husband and yes i will stand there and say these things whereas some people won't but i think going back to your children that's where we need to teach boys what's okay and what's not okay to start. Yeah. And the same with girls, what's acceptable and what's not acceptable.
Before we continue, a huge thank you for joining me in this episode. But I do have a small favour to ask. To keep bringing on these fantastic guests, your subscription would really, really help. So please hit subscribe on YouTube or on your favourite audio platform. It supports the show more than you might imagine. Anyway, let's dive back into the episode. You're a busy entrepreneur and you've got young children. How do you balance that sort of family life, work life? Do you have a routine? How do you juggle it? Yeah, I think it's really important. So what? So I think it's being strategic with your time. And yeah, I think it's being strategic with your time and having, um, you know, like I have a, a weekly schedule and I kind of stick to it so that I'm doing certain things things certain things on certain days so that I bulk task all my marketing I bulk task all my um finances or whatever tasks it is that I'm that I'm focused on for that week um and I think it's definitely having like those boundaries in place as well so you you have quite a, a strict routine and you're, you're obviously quite strict with your your time as well and you were commenting that you know it doesn't matter how long you spend or how long you give yourself for a job almost the, the job will expand to, to reach that time so do you structure jobs in your diary or in a calendar or some sort of productivity tool to ensure that actually you're really time efficient yeah definitely like I said so I think if you if you're given 30 minutes you'll take 30 minutes if you're given four hours you'll take four hours and I think that yeah. when you've got family and you've got children and you've got all these other things going on you kind of put that pressure and those deadlines on yourself um, and I think that it's really important as well to say no to things so I'd probably say no to more things than I say yes to um, you know you don't want to be pulled in and sidetracked into things that are not they're not working towards where you're trying to go and what you're trying to achieve. And I think that often people do that because they're trying to please everybody around them um, rather than just staying focused on what they're trying to achieve right then and there. Yeah, yeah, completely. I think saying no is a bit of a superpower. If it's not going to add anything to you know, what you're trying to achieve in life, then say no to it. So you've clearly... Um, yeah, got some systems in place as such for managing your time, but talk about systems within a within a business and how you work with people with, you know, particularly in the the salon industries, but outside of that as well. What why are systems in a business so important? Yeah, I think so. We um, teach our clients, so we have obviously a lot of salon owners and a lot of six seven figure female entrepreneurs who might have an online business, an education business, property business, um, and quite a wide variety. And I think that putting that time pressure on you helps to create systems. And I think the reason a lot of people don't create systems is because initially it might take that tiny bit longer, but long term, that's going to pay off, right? So you want to create them systems and processes for multiple reasons, because one, they're an asset to your business. Like what we find, especially with a lot of salon owners, is their business is 100% reliant on them. If they're not in it and they're not moving all the cogs, the business grounds to a halt, which mm. means that when they're on holiday, things are going wrong. It means that they, they fear having time off and stepping away from their business. They can't go and do these other passion projects or businesses because they are literally tied because they are the thing that moves all the cogs, right? So when you create them systems and processes, number one, you're creating business assets so that that business can still thrive without you. And if a business can't thrive without you, you've just created yourself a job. You've not really got a business because you haven't got anything you could sell long-term because once you take right. new out the equation, it's not really worth anything. Um, and obviously you want to automate things as well so that your systems and process can become automations so that you are reducing um, the manual time, the manual labor. And so things become more automated, but also then they become... Um, they become more more systemized in the way that your brand, people interacting with your brand becomes more cohesive as well and that everyone's going to get the same experience rather than relying on somebody manually delivering elements of your business all the time, right? Like um, such as the way that you communicate and all these things can be automated. So it's just 
raising it that next level so it's more polished it's more high end and everybody gets the same experience so there's multiple different um benefits to having the systems and the processes i mean now what i tend to do now i've got like team members is any task or activity we're like right how can we are we making this a system like somebody record it on yeah. loom and put it onto trello so we use trello um yep. internally and we love trello because anything that we do it might be booking events um it might be um teaching some of our clients like putting things into our members areas and all these things like even down to our video editing is a system and a process and we're like right make a loom on it make a checklist put a step by step so that if this person's off somebody else could easily pick it up for them yeah um and the same like if that staff member leaves you know which staff members are going to leave and they're going to go on to do other things and that's great but then somebody can step into their role and pick up the pieces as fast as possible so as much as people think you know it's creating the systems and processes is time consuming and blah 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 or it's not long term not when you know you, your staff can easily pick up each other's roles you can step away from the business your brand and people interacting with your business have a much better experience like systems and processes is the boring part of business and i get it it's not sexy it's not fun like we all want to talk about marketing and the shiny stuff and and i get that but that's not the foundations that will get you that freedom from your business like doing that mundane boring part is the part that will give you the freedom and the flexibility and enable you to go and do more fun and exciting stuff yeah yeah and i mean you say about not not the sexy stuff and marketing and things like that but actually consistently delivering the, the same service is actually a massive part of your marketing because yeah. you're, you're giving that repeat service. So actually by systemizing, you are actually improving your marketing because yeah. everyone will receive that great service every single time because it's not reliant on someone remembering to send that message, to confirm that booking, to speak to a customer like this, whatever it is, it's yeah. systemized. Yeah, absolutely. And people, what we have to accept as well as business owners is that since um 2020 that people expect that online journey they're yeah. expecting this from your business as standard whether you are a small independent or a big chain they are expecting all of these things to happen but like if you sign up for an email list you expect an email like straight away like you expect yeah. that they're going to email you you expect this email sequence you you expect all of these things and yet as small business owners, people are like, oh, should I email my list? Am I going to annoy them? I'm like, they're expecting you to email them. <laughs> like they yeah. give you their email address. Like now you need to market to them just like all these big brands do because that's what they're expecting from you. Yeah, gone are the days that small businesses are competing just with other small businesses. In fact, we're, we're competing with the massive brands because yeah. – it's our expectation, you know, all the, the demand that we place on everything, whether it's ordering something from Prime and it turns up next day, you know, that is my expectation for ordering something. That yeah. The process is, is the same. Even if I'm ordering from someone who's operating out of their garage and it's a small product, I still expect it that the, the next day or at least communication of when it's been dispatched, when it's going to arrive. I, I, want, I want to understand the journey. Yeah. It's made everybody have to raise their game um, and to to deliver things in in that way exactly that and and you've got to got to go right. We need to raise uh, raise ourselves and raise our knowledge and our skills and our strategies to that level, or we can expect these other people to overtake us. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Because if you don't adapt, actually, someone else will. Yeah, <laughs> because and and that's that's the thing you've you've got to remember that actually in in businesses I often compare it as you know it's like having a having a plant you know plants they even need to grow or they die it's, it's there's no just stand yeah. still you've got to keep watering you've got to keep feeding you've got to keep growing otherwise you will just disappear. Yeah, and I think that's why in business like you've got to have that that mentor or that that group of people that you can say this is our current challenge this is our current problem and then you can thrash it out and get 
hundreds of ideas and then nail down the one that you need to go and execute and implement to take your business to the next level. And I think that there's so many business owners that don't do that and they just want to keep doing what they've always done. And then, mm. you know, you're going to end up like blockbusters and you're going to, yeah. you know, Netflix is going to come along and take you off, off the radar without you even knowing it because you were just focused on always doing the same thing over and over and you can't, you can't do that anymore. No, I often tell the story of Blockbuster because they at one point had the opportunity to buy Netflix. Yeah. And they didn't because their current business model was great. You know, people came in, rented a DVD or VHS as it was back then, took it home. And in fact, Blockbuster had negotiated a really good deal. They didn't even have to buy the films. They were actually, you know, they were given the films and then just paid a percentage. Their business model was fantastic. Yeah. But they didn't have the foresight to see the future and actually progress. No. And well, we know what, what happened there. Yeah. And the, and that's the one of the things you have to look out for is your consumer behavior is changing. And you might think, oh, well, I'm a salon. Oh, I'm a plumber. Oh, I'm... No, no, no. Like consumer behavior is changing and you've got to be aware of it and you've got to put those systems and processes and and, cha and you might even have to change your business model, your products and stuff to, to evolve and adapt and develop. But where are you getting those ideas from? Yeah. Yeah. I, I can see that, you know, we are changing as people and, and people's expectations will, will change. It was um, funny. You were talking about dealing with uh, the trades people earlier and I, I was working with someone on some testimonials for their business. They were a trade and someone actually said <laughs> the compliment they gave was they turned up when they said they were going to <laughs> and then left the place tidy. And I was like, I mean, if that's our expectation of someone, that's yeah. really low. But that then gave you know, that business, the real opportunity to, to really set themselves apart of actually, we've made an appointment, we're going to be there on time. Oh, and we're going to tidy up at the end. And actually, everyone will have to play catch up with that. Otherwise, you will just get left behind because we, we will start not accepting this whole, oh, I'll be there at some point today and things yeah. like that. No, m make an appointment, turn up when you say you're going to do and deliver the job. Yeah. And yeah, our expectations will will move from how we expect some industries to work across all industries. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, we're seeing it in the beauty salon with deposits, and now restaurants are doing it as well, where you've got yeah. to put your card details in to book a table. Like everything is changing, and you, as a business owner, you've got to be on the forefront of that and looking proactively looking for those changes so that you can be ahead of the curve and not be the follower. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was talking to my, my barber recently and actually they're changing to a system where you, you pretty much, you know, you book, book your appointment on online and if you don't turn up, well, it, it still charges you yeah. because th the biggest thing for them is, is no shows, you know, it's, ridiculous and especially in the sort of barbering industry it's, it's a quick turnaround people are in out and if they're fully booked and someone doesn't turn up you've literally just wasted you know an hour and, and certainly for some salons with you know some of the services that you're offering someone not turning up can be a massive impact on the day's turnover oh yeah huge huge and again that comes down to having the systems and processes that can yeah. can manage all of that for you without it having to rely on on somebody manually doing all of those processes so yeah systems and processes like is absolutely key to your time and with along with your time management and putting those boundaries in place um absolutely yeah before i'm, I'm going to ask you in a minute to, to give a tip for someone starting a business but before we get to that actually i want to dive into you're, you're very busy I, I get that from our conversation today you've got a lot going on you know you've got young kids like how do you what do you do outside of this to, to switch off because it's very easy to always be thinking about work what what do you do um do you know what i actually don't think i do me and my husband were laughing about this the other day and he because i was saying obviously we plan so i help our clients to plan like a generational wealth so i'm like if you want to retire at 40 you've got houses you've got assets that produce you income blah 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 like this is our goal um and I said to it to my husband about if, yeah, I could retire at 40. And then he was like, you will never retire. And he's like, even when you've got time off, you're reading a book, you're on this webinar, you're doing this. Like, but that to me, that is my downtime. That is what I enjoy mm. is new learning. Like I love yeah. like oh, reading, anything to do with marketing mindset. 
I'm reading or I've got an audible on or I'm joining a webinar um, and stuff like that. So to me, that is what I love to do. Um, and, you know, and the same if I've got a weekend, I might go and see one of my friends. Um, and again, we'll sit there and we'll talk about marketing. We'll talk about business. We talk about all these things. Um, so I, I don't actually think that I do, but I think that's because I do enjoy it. But like yeah. I said, my son plays football seven days a week. So we do spend a lot of time. All of our evenings are, watch, are taking him to training um, mm. and his games and stuff at weekends. So we have a lot of friends in those circles as well. So like this weekend, he's playing Fulham. And then we're going to drive into London and we're going to stay at a hotel and go for dinner um, and kind of make the most of it so that my daughter, bless her, she gets dragged to his football all the time. So I'm like, <laughs> we'll tag on something really fun as a family yeah. that we'll do as well. Um, you know, it's the same when he goes and plays Man City, we'll go, we'll stay over, we'll go to the Trafford Centre, we'll go book somewhere nice for dinner. So I suppose in our downtime, we're always trying to do something nice as a family together um, as well. And I think, you know, that's equally as important. And that is my downtime is holiday and family time um, together and doing nice, nice things. You know, it's work hard, play hard. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> so if someone was looking to, to start a business, I mean, we, we've, we've spoken about systems there. Either what would be one of the first systems you'd, you'd put in place or what what advice would you give to someone, you know, maybe a, a young female coming out of school thinking, I, I don't know, you know, maybe first year of job, I'm thinking of starting a business. What would you say to them? Um, I would say to get a mentor. Um, I think when I first started my business, like, and I grew up um, with my nan and my granddad a lot. Like I was with them a lot. And so I inherited a lot of their money beliefs. And it was very much like you don't spend money if you've not earned it, you don't have it if you've not got it. And, th and this can hinder you a little bit when it comes to investing. And I think that if you're not going to go go and pay for uni and college and all of this stuff, which if you want to start a business, I wouldn't recommend that. Instead, I'd spend the money on a mentor. Like go, whatever you want to do, go and find somebody in that industry that can coach you and teach you how to do it. So for me, I had this big mindset and I, I at the time I said to my husband, I was like, my business has only just started, so I haven't made any money how can I warrant spending 10 grand on a coach, right? Mm. And he's obviously always played sports, so he's always had a coach. Like, And he's like, well, how are you going to make the money if you don't have somebody to show you how to make the money? And I was like, I yeah. know, I know this, but I can't like wrap my head around, around this money block, around this mindset. And he was like, well, we'll, we'll just personally put spend the money, and then when the business makes the money back, we'll put it back. And I was like, right, okay. And it was getting over this mindset. I could hear my nan going, you haven't had the money, so don't spend the money. <laughs> but I'm like, oh. So I was like trapped in this kind of, And but if you were just starting out, the truth is why take years and years and years to learn stuff the hard way when now mm. you can go and get the best coaches. A lot of my coaches are American, right? And you can go and get the best coaches in the world and get access to them people who've made millions and billions you can get access to so i would say invest in yourself invest in your knowledge your skills and your learning and go and find somebody who can teach you and show you the exact steps to take to make that business successful within six months 12 months instead of like five ten years yeah, I I loved you. You were talking about sport there as well. And I often use that analogy because in any professional sport, everyone has a coach. You can be the best footballer in the world, but you still work with a coach. Yeah. And, and actually you have various coaches. There might be, you know, your football coach, a, a dietitian, someone working with you in the gym. But in business, so many people go into it thinking, I'll just learn as I go or, you know, yeah. not needing anyone else's support. But actually business is a competitive environment. The, the yeah. same as, as sports. So if you want to excel, actually get other people in to support you and help you and teach you. It's yeah. it's the quicker way and actually just the, the most obvious way if you're going to compare it to the, the sporting world. 
Oh, definitely. Like, if you want to learn to drive, you go and get a driving instructor. When you want your kids mm -hmm. to learn how to swim, you take them to swimming lessons. Like, we do this with every other area of life. And what we have to realize is we're not taught about business or money in school. So no. if you are going to start a business, you need to go and get those mentors to show you how to market, how to be a leader, how to structure, how what business model you should be running, like all of these things, you need to go and get somebody to show you how to do them because you weren't taught in school. And for like me, a lot of business owners, you haven't got family members necessarily that own a business, run a business, like, um, and you need to go and get those mentors for somebody to show you how exactly like that. So that would be my best piece of advice. Even if you're just starting out, go and get somebody to show you and there's access to so many different levels of courses and investment and stuff like you don't have to start right at the top with a big investment like you can start small but definitely go and get a mentor yeah and there's, there are lots of i say free resources out there you know even just following the right people on social media and things like that so yeah. if someone wanted to find you on social media or connect with you how would they do that yeah, so you can uh, connect with me on Instagram or on our website, which is um, just jessicacrane.co.uk um, and check out. We've got loads of resources on YouTube. We run webinars, um, anything like that. And you can check it out, podcasts and all, all sorts of free resources as well. Um, and we run a challenge, um, a live challenge for salon owners. They can come and work with us for three days. Um, so yeah, lots and lots of different ways that they can um, get get that get those knowledge and the skills and the yeah. strategies to start implementing. Yeah, Jessica, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been an absolute absolute pleasure to sort of hear your journey from your early beginnings right through to what you're doing now. And you know, I wish you all the best of success, certainly with your future endeavours like property and and things like that. So I'm sure you're going to absolutely smash it. You've got you know your mindset seems to be absolutely spot on. It's been a pleasure to hear from you and actually take for me to learn something from you. I've really enjoyed it. So thank you for joining me today. Oh, thank you, Matt. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Balance Ambition Podcast. I genuinely hope the stories inspire you as much as they inspire me. If you found value in today's conversation, please share it with a friend. And remember, by subscribing, you won't miss an episode and it would truly mean the world to me. Stay balanced and I'll see you next time.